My name is Guy and this is what I'm going to talk about today. Fuji X100T. First I want to talk about how I ended up with this camera. I shot photography from 1980 to 1995. Film photography. I got out of it uh, for quite a while. Then in 2017 I purchased a Canon 80D which is what I'm filming on right now. I started looking into photography more and more and I started seeing certain images and I looked at those images and I thought I really want that type of image when I take a picture. That's what I'm looking for. And so I started finding that the pictures that I really liked that I found on Instagram were shot with the Fuji film cameras. So I started looking at some of the cameras and I settled on the X100 series cameras. I ended up finding an X100T. I really like this camera. It produces the type of images that I'm looking for when I take a picture. They're very sharp. They're very uh, crisp. The black and white is just amazing. And the film profiles that are in this camera, I just love them. The JPEG, the one I use a lot is the black and white with red filter, the monochromatic with red filter. I love it because of the crisp darks and lights. Um, I'm going to get more into that in another video about how I set up the camera. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about the different things that I have bought for this camera, things that I'm comfortable with that I like to use. So let's move on. Let's talk a little bit about the camera strap. This is a Peak Design Slide Light camera strap. I like this strap because it's nice and thick. And if I'm wearing this camera for a long time, it doesn't dig into my shoulders. I like to wear it more like a sling style where it goes across my chest, not just hanging in front. I've tried the camera straps where it just hangs in front. And I just, I just don't like that. Um, there's a couple reasons why. One is I don't like it always being right here and bouncing around all the time if I'm walking and I'm not holding the camera. The other thing is I don't like attaching the camera straps up here in these mount holes because when I grab the camera I like to just grab the camera and I tried different straps and it always seemed like when I'm grabbing the strap the strap gets in the way or if I'm tipping the camera to take a picture vertically it happens that the strap kind of drops across the screen or whatever and you know maybe there's techniques and ways to do that but I just figured why why even deal with it I got this camera strap I bought the camera anchor it's the small camera anchor and I put it on the bottom of this camera one of the big complaints is when you put the camera anchor from Peak Design on here it covers over the battery hole I had the big Peak Design uh, camera anchor on here and it did cover the hole this one if you put it on like they show you to put it on which is horizontally on the bottom it'll cover the hole So that means you have to un, uh, unscrew this every time that you want to change your battery or take out an SD card and with this camera the batteries go pretty quick so you're unscrewing this thing often so what I did was when I bought this I took a chance that it would be thin enough that if I mounted it vertically I could attach both camera strap ends to one side so that's what I did you want to take a look real close I don't know if you can get that right there anyway that's what it looks like Whoa. <laughs> so it's attached to one side. I took a little bit of gaffer's tape and I kind of made a little bumper that I put in between the two ends of the strap just to keep them separate. I don't know if it does any good, but uh, I like it. And for me, this works because I can carry the camera more like a sling. And then when I want to take a picture, I just reach down to the side and just pick it up like this. It's real easy. For me, that's such a natural, easy movement. And uh, it keeps the camera out of the way when I go walk around with it. Anyways, let's move on from the camera strap. We're going to talk a little bit about lens hoods next. Let's talk about lens hoods. I've got three different ones. This is the first one I bought. It's a JJC lens hood. It's kind of big uh, and flared out a little bit. It's not bad. If I ever decide to go um, strapless or maybe put a wrist strap on my camera, and tuck it in my pocket. This will get caught sometimes in my pocket. So I wasn't really like thrilled with this. Uh, it makes it a little bigger in the front and it gets caught. Also, I like to shoot in OVF. That I'll talk a little bit more about in my street photography hacks 
That's another video. Watch for it. And um, I like this. It looks good. I took it. I sanded it down a little bit, if you can see that. To make it look a little old, I'll get into that in a minute. And then I got this. I tried this out. I thought I'm going to go small. This one was too big. This one is a little bit too small. It's not actually a lens hood. Actually, it's a step-up ring that goes from 49 to 52 millimeters. And I tried this for a while. It's a smaller profile for the front lens, but it does protect the B and W filter that I use. But it's a little bit small. So that one's just too small. The one I settled on is this one right here. This is a hog design, hog, hog, something like that. Anyways, it'll be listed in the description below. I like this one. It looks a little funny on the camera. It looked funnier when it was all silver. What I did was I painted it black. And then I took some sandpaper and I sanded it and wore it down. Now let me explain the reason why. When I go out shooting with this camera, a lot of times people just think I have this old camera that I'm taking pictures with. When I had the silver hood on there, it just looked a little too new to me. That's why I painted it black and I sanded it down. Is it true what kind of camera you do street photography with according to how people react to you? I think it's definitely true. If I go out and shoot with my DSLR, people will ask me, what is this for? Why are you taking my picture? I've had people get upset with me for taking a picture before. I had a guy one time start yelling at me, telling me it was illegal to take pictures. And I was in a public area, so it wasn't illegal. We had a little discussion over that. Anyways, I have never had anybody question me about this camera, except when I was in a restaurant one time, I wanted to take a picture through the kitchen window into the kitchen because I liked the colors and I thought the window framed the workers. And the uh, restaurant manager uh, came and talked to me and wondered why I was taking a picture into the kitchen. When I explained it, she was totally fine. I offered to show her the picture. I said I would delete the picture. I knew it was illegal because it's not legal to shoot in a restaurant or someplace like that. You can shoot in public, but not inside. I took a chance. Uh, anyway, she said it was fine. Keep the picture, no big deal. But that's the only time I've ever been questioned about this camera. I think this offers a good amount of protection. It looks okay to me. And when I keep it in my pocket, when I'm not using a strap and just a wrist strap, it's fine. When I use a wrist strap, all I do is spin the anchor. I take off the peak design strap, which comes off really easy. And I attach the wrist strap to the slot that doesn't have the um, gaffer's tape on it. It's real simple, real easy. Another thing on this camera, I have a screen protector on here. It's a plastic screen protector that I bought that's for a phone. And it was a real cheap one. But all I did was I cut it to fit this. I think it's called Armor Shield. I'm not positive. If I figure it out, I'll put it in the description below. Anyways, I just cut it out to fit and I put it on here. And I actually have enough for one more. So it's real nice. It's good protection for the back of the camera. So, what else do I have on this camera? I have this thumb grip. It's a cheap one from Amazon. I really like it. It helps. It really does help a lot. I tried it without it and it was not so good. This gives me some place to grip with my thumb. Makes it a little easier to hold. I have this soft shutter release button here. Again, this is a very cheap one. It came two in a package. And I have, this is the first one I ever put on. It has never come loose or come off. It's great. I'll put that in the description below. Also, I'll put the thumb grip in the description below as well. What else is on this camera? I guess that's it for the little add-ons. If you've enjoyed this video, press the like button. Hit subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. And also, make sure you hit the bell notification so that you'll be notified 
when I have another video coming up. Thank you. Bye.